Here you come. Miss Bingley! It is a triumph. I, I cannot conceive a more accomplished, elegant hostess. Not even Lady Catherine de Bourgh? Oh. Oh, I... Do not tax yourself, Mr. Collins. It makes you look like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is my pleasure. Of course it is. But what type of fish, Miss Price? A cod? A cod? <gasps> I'm not an authority on fish. Mm. Fish are in your blood. Curious image. It's going rather well for Mr. Collins at the moment. He has um, managed to get himself engaged to our heroine, Amanda Price of Hammersmith. And he... Uh, so he's, he's delighted because it will please his patroness, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, because he's heard that, I think, um, Amanda Price is, is well-connected and wealthy, and, of course, that's his passion, is to social climb and to deal with the creme de la creme of society. And he's about to discover, through a rumour put about by a certain Mr Wickham, I think it is, that uh, Amanda Price may not be all she seems to be in terms of background, and that there is a terrible worry that her money uh, may come through fish and the mongering uh, thereof. So he's about to have a horrible disappointment, but swiftly perhaps move on to some other lucky, lucky lady. Director of photography David Higgs has spent weeks planning the lighting to create the particular mood of the period. I'm in love. I'm invulnerable. Like... They're trying to make it sort of um, quite rich but quite real and try to, in kind of the way we light it and the instruments are trying to use it, are trying to make them very, you know, that, you know, that they are um, of the period. I mean, obviously you don't have lights of the period, but you try to use warmer electrical lights rather than, you know, fluorescence or... Or, you know, or, or um, more kind of modern feeling lights. So they try to reflect that kind of candlelit feel. I used the very simple things, you know, I used uh, Chinese lanterns, you know, sort of, but rather a lot of them. And, um, you know, on this job I had, I had them all dyed a certain colour so that they would kind of be a bit warmer. And then I run them, very simply run them back to a very, kind of very big desk with lots of mixing buttons so I can bring up the looks into the areas you know, make them brighter and darker as I, as I need to. When we were filming at, uh, at Bramham, we did a, a large uh, ballroom scene, which went across, I think, two or three days filming. Now, that involved, uh, what was 20-odd dancers, 40-odd people, extras, and a band all having to play or appear to play whilst dialogue is being spoken now we can't have we can't have the sound of reality getting in the way of um, of the dialogue that has to be clean so everybody was equipped with a little hidden earpiece and around the room ran a loop of wire called an induction loop and so the sound is fed to them secretly so we can um, we can make it appear they're all dancing away and playing their instruments, although no sound is being created. And then we can get the dialogue cleanly, and then afterwards that music is put back on. <laughs> the whole choreography was really important, that Jemima, which she was brilliant at, that she looks like, on the one hand, she's slightly busking it with the dance, because, of course, she wouldn't know exactly what step to do. And on the other hand, the way the dialogue works was deliberately messy, and um, and that's you know hopefully that has a very natural feel that she's sort of dancing badly, but in a way, as anyone would tell you, you know, dancing badly is a lot harder to act I think, than than dancing well. And it's also so much lovely stuff that you really want to capture on camera. You don't want to get to the end of the day and feel I didn't really that looked wonderful, but what's actually on the lens wasn't quite there. So so yes, I think it, it was. Um, but there's a lot of lovely elements there to get. Still to come, Mr Darcy gets shirty in that famous lake scene. Digging your own grave, a prop man's guide to transforming a churchyard with plywood gravestones. And shooting himself in the foot, Mr Collins bags a peacock by mistake. Oh. Coming up in part three of Lost in Austin Behind the Scenes, Darcy gets a dousing, but it's all for the sake of his art. Bar Bar Black Sheep, 
never work with children and animals. And Lindsay Duncan discloses an actor's little secret. I can't play cards to save my life. I've absolutely no idea what's going on in it. On a freezing morning in November, the cast and crew of Lost in Austin have set up to film a shooting party in the grounds of the Bramham Park estate. I parked up the cars at about five o'clock in the morning, which was fun. Um, did that for three hours. Um, don't really get time to have like any time to yourself, actually. Then I came up, set up the location, made sure the location zone were happy, they knew exactly what we'd be doing throughout the day. Um, then I've just got to generally keep everything tidy, keep the green room tidy, just bits like that. I think our locations team is good, and looking at the way it sort of works out, I've really, yeah, I'd love to be a line producer. So I won't be uh, doing bin bags and cones anymore then, I'd be uh, doing a good job, yeah. Morven Christie plays Jane Bennett. We're doing a hunting scene, we're all out on a shoot. Uh, at Pemberley, yes. okay. and um, and uh, we've got Mr. Collins, who I've unfortunately yeah. got myself married to, um, who accidentally shoots a peacock, as you do, and um, and uh, sort of messes the whole thing up. And um, I've got a little scene with Mr. Bingley, um, where I go to tell him that he should fall in love with someone else and marry someone else, and that I want him to to try and sort of release him to go and be with someone else, but he's um, drunk and destructive and uh, all a bit sad. But first, a bit of rifle practice for Mr Bingley. Yeah? <laughs> now, what you've got to bear in no. mind, when you squeeze a trigger and you get some sparks and you d nothing it, happens... Do, do not mm. take the gun out of your Don't shoulder. go, oh, there's something matter with my gun. Keep it pointed safe and we'll come and take it off okay, you. Yeah. Cool. All right? Just and if it's raining, they're even more unreliable. <laughs> because obviously once that powder gets wet, yeah. it don't work. We're TV and film armourers, and we work all throughout the country, John O'Groats to Land's End, working in all types of productions. I mean, today it happens to be flintlocks, tomorrow it could be machine guns, the week after it could be rocket launchers or mortars, absolutely any type of weapon, firearms, swords, crossbows, longbows, absolutely everything. And we also do effects as well. So, for example, today, if, if, if we'd have had a massive gunfight and I wanted to see supposedly bullet strikes onto cars or people or whatever, we do all those as well. You know, into wood, trees, we set cars on fire, we set buildings on fire. We blow things up for a living. It's funny, when I, do, when I got the part and I told people I was playing Bingley, everyone's reaction was, oh, oh Bingley, oh, he's so sweet. And it's, it's very true. He, um... He's just one of these people who's so incredibly wealthy that he has nothing really to worry about. Uh, the scene we've been doing is uh, the start of Bingley's tragic downfall. Uh, Bingley has his heart broken and turns to the bottle, which I have been swigging from all day. Um, and this is... Uh, Darcy has invited everyone to a shoot and Bingley has just had a very rough night of it and is being very uh, cavalier with the gun and, uh, and is without, without stock, so he's all dishevelled from the night before. And it's, yes, the start of his, his tragic demise. Caroline is a bit of a cow. She's a society girl and she doesn't like having to come into the countryside and mix with the riffraff. Um, and... She doesn't like the fact that Darcy could possibly be stolen from her. Um, he is her future. Um, she's not particularly in love with him, uh, but he is her future and he will secure her fortune. So there is a danger for her throughout this whole story. Oh, it's great. It's so much fun. I mean, it's great to dress up like this. I have the most fabulous hat today. Um, uh, apart from freezing our ass off, it's... Great, we are really cold here. 